I'm loving the pop off. Two. What's good? Welcome back to the Pop Off Podcast, a conversation show about the Kansas City Chiefs defeating the Baltimore Ravens 27 to 20 in the season opener of the 2024-2025 NFL season. I am Ralph Compiano. I am your host. I am joined, as always, by my co-host for the first time in a long time in a devastating fashion. I don't know if I've ever seen him more down bad than this. Joining us live from his car in Los Angeles, California, is Michael Cerrone. Isaiah Likely uh, just tiptoed out of the end zone on the final play of the game. One of the most exciting and thrilling games that we've had in a long time. Do you take any positivity away from this, or are you just as down to the dumps as fucking possible? Um, I just want to start off say, uh, I mean, this is truly the the closest I've ever been to killing myself. <laughs> um, and without all you guys, I'd probably be – it wouldn't be close. I would have crossed the line. Um, everything – yeah, I'm in, I'm in my car right now. Um <laughs> Everything's been going wrong. No, I shouldn't say that. Uh, no, I'll just shut up about my life. Yes. Um, to lose, <sighs> I'm going to fucking kill someone. And the only person around is me. So to lose in the AFC Championship by Zay Flowers not reaching the ball three inches farther is heartbreaking. Is ripping your heart out. To then go down and lose by not even inches, Ralph, by... By centimeters. centimeters. Okay, and yes, yes, I get he missed the throw to Zay the play before, but he, he's running to the right. Chris Jones is right there, and he knows it's almost going to get tipped. He missed him. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, the thing is, he comes right back to make a play that's called on the field a touchdown. I, I'm not even mad about the miss. I don't care about that. It's more impressive to come back the next play and deliver what we all thought was a touchdown. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll say this, the, the one positive to, to go to the good thing. You don't, we don't play the chiefs in arrowhead 18 times a season. Okay. To go there, the first, you know, game of the whole season, not your season, but the whole NFL season to go into arrowhead, the reigning champs to have everything kind of go, not your way. At first, you got the rookie scoring two touchdowns, which also, by the way, the second one was a blown coverage that no skill. I would have caught that ball and scored as well. Um, <laughs> and also, meanwhile, it, they're, uh, we'll go into that later. But yes, to, to only lose by, you know, a centimeter against the reigning champs in Arrowhead, that's a good fight. That's something I can lay my head on that, you know, O line didn't look great. Defense didn't look a, as they usually do. You got, you got, you got fucking. ABC showing highlights of an offensive lineman hold brutally holding the Ravens player, and they're showing it as a highlight. What are we doing? No calls on the chief side of the ball per usual, but yeah, to lose by one touchdown in a centimeter to the best team in the league, the new Patriots, I'm fine with that. I'll say that. I'm, I'm not happy with it. I'm fine with that. It's the Isaiah Likely game. That's what this is because it ends with him, and he was probably the most impactful player aside from the two quarterbacks, yeah. and maybe you can make an argument for Xavier Worthy, I guess, but he didn't have near as many touches. But it, it's like it's so devastating because he had, what, nine catches, <sighs> 111 yards, and a touchdown. And he had the touchdown that brought you back into the game, down 20 to 10, you know, on the freelance ball by Lamar where he gets outside of the pocket – Likely does his best Kelsey impression where he's headed towards the sideline. He sees Lamar in trouble, and then he darts up field. Lamar gives him a ball, and he it's like inside leverage too, and he creates it, and he makes like two guys miss on his way to the end zone. Beautiful. Fucking and then, beautiful. You know, 45 minutes of real time later, uh, what would it be, like 18, 23 minutes of game time later, the very last play of the game, Lamar went to Zay, or the second to last play of the game rather, he went to Zay. Yep. He missed him, right? Who does he go to next? He doesn't go to Andrews, who has been his favorite target his entire career in Baltimore. He doesn't go to Rashad Bateman, who made a 
terrific play right before that. Maybe the biggest play of his career thus far, you know, four seasons Literally. in. Yeah. And, and he goes back to his bread and butter throughout the entire game. So I think that you can take away from this, like, the likely stuff that happened the second half of last season. That it's wasn't a fluke. There. When he stepped yeah. up for Andrews when he was hurt, it was real. And he came out tonight, like you said, in Arrowhead. The Everybody watching this game. I can't wait to see how many people watch this game because it's like the yeah. NFL just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And he yeah. showed up on the biggest, brightest stage, and he fucking balled, dude. Like, he balled. And it sucks for him. Like, it was the Kevin Durant thing. You know, Kevin Durant against Milwaukee. His shoe was just like a, a half a half a size too big on the three-point line. And that's all this was with Likely. That's it. Game of centimeters. Yeah. It, it's – uh, I, I think, yeah, you got to give it to the kid. Out of Coastal Carolina, just – for so long, Mark Andrews was the guy. I, I think with the, our lack of depth on the receiving side, I think we just run two tight ends. Why not? I've never, I've almost never seen likely not get a jump ball. Um, it's unbelievable. Every jump ball this guy comes down, it's like, it's like fucking watching Megatron. Um, even that last play to catch it and then be right there. Um, yeah, it's just brutally painful. I, I think the other positive is it's really hard to beat a team twice. If this is if this is their win, as much of a kick in the balls it is to start off the NFL. I mean, I was so we were all, aren't we all so excited for football and everything? And the fucking I mean, I watched the end of that game in a Chili's, and that like <laughs> and to to have me. Oh, it's just so bad. But if that has to be the loss of the Chiefs, let us get it out of the way here. And I, it's all the fire from that fucking loss. And they're acting like they fucking won. I mean, dude, yeah, they well, won. Can I it, spin but... zone it for you? Because last year, the Chiefs also <sighs> opened the season. And they opened it against the Detroit Lions in Arrow. Yeah, and they got beat. All right? They got beat. So optimism says that if you lose the opening game of the season, you got a chance to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. All right. I, like, now yeah, we, I, I want to take a big picture to look at this the rest of the game because we haven't even talked that much about Lamar and Mahomes. And they were the headliners going into this, rightfully so. The two best quarterbacks in the NFL. You can make an argument for Josh Allen if you want. You can make one for Burrow. I think these are probably the two best quarterbacks in the NFL. And they played like it tonight. Let's talk about Lamar first. 26 completions on 41 attempts tonight for 273 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Along with that, he had 16 carries for 122 yards. I thought that Collinsworth and Tariko brought up something kind of interesting, and Clark actually brought it up in the group chat too. He said something along the lines of, that's a lot of designed runs for your MVP quarterback in week one. And I would agree with that sentiment for the most part if you're talking about you know, a game against, let's say, the Bengals, like week five or week six, or let's say you know they play the Texans or something like that. They're playing the Chiefs. And they have a lot of baggage with this team. This has been the team that has been in their way the entire time. So the fact that they ran him this much, I don't think it's a bit a consistent thread throughout the season. I don't think he's going to go for 100 yards every fucking week. He might not even no. do it again the, regular, the rest of the regular season as a rusher. But that just showed you how badly they wanted to win this game. And then Lamar, after a bunch of plays, was shoving defenders if they bumped into him. He was playing like this pissed off attitude that I haven't seen from him before. And it was like, I was fired up on this fucking couch, like jacked for Lamar. Yeah, dude, he, he, he wants it. A little, I mean, I, I watched a lot of, you know, in the camp interview, he wants it a little bit more this year. Um, it, there's a certain, I think a little bit different of an edge to him. Um, they know that this is like not a make it or break it year, but this is like for fuck's sake, like, it, you know, we, we almost should have had him last year. This is the real deal. And I don't care about the run. Like, the runs, bro, it, it's – it's why not, man? And honestly, the you know you know who is probably asking for the runs the most? It's probably fucking Lamar. He's probably saying, design me some shit. A lot of his runs come from not design runs. Yep. And that's fine. Um, I was the guy getting pulled over behind me. This is wild, live on the pod. Oh, my God. Um <laughs> We got an arrest happening, but a lot of them, dude, every, I've never seen It looks seen like you're getting pulled over though. Cause it's like perfectly behind your head seat where yeah. it's like, oh shit, your head Who rest knows? is. Honestly, officers, you. take me in. I'll have a bed to sleep on tonight. Um, <laughs> this is wild. 
I mean, you heard it here first, folks. Pop off pod. We're in the middle of a crime scene. I mean, what more do you want? Maybe a Ravens win? Maybe a... Fuck it. Uh, but yeah, the Zach Roger, when have they ever... Like, I always, you know, third and short, Lamar with like a half a second type of hesitation to find the hole, he darts for seven yards every time. Yep. So I don't know why we're throwing so many bubble screens to Zay. I mean, yeah, I could talk about that game forever. Um, well, they went away from the bubble screens a little bit more in the second half, and I think yeah. they were like, all right, fuck it. We're just going to beat people up. Like, Derrick Henry had a big fourth down conversion. I think it was fourth and two. Yep. Got actually touched behind the line of scrimmage. And then your point with Lamar, like, yeah. he's like, um, it's 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 sneaky how strong he is. This motherfucker was yeah. getting tackled from behind, and he stiff-armed a dude out of yeah. his way. no like, call, horse him. collar. Like, yeah, I know exactly what player you're, you're talking about. Yeah, he uh, he has a, he has a grit to him this year, and yeah, a lot to obviously to work on to take away from a lot of penalties on the Ravens side of the ball. Um, of course, none on the Chiefs because why why would the Chiefs ever hold someone? That's never happened before. Um, but yeah, to only lose to lose by seven and a centimeter, and to have that much to, to work on and get better at. Like I said before, I'm I'm not happy, but I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. We're, thank God, you know, you don't have to play the Chiefs in Arrowhead every week. So, and I guess I didn't watch the post game interview, but I guess Lamar was really hurt, really hurting, um, which is good. You want to show that he cares. You know, he's passionate. He cares about this shit. He knows how big that was, and to just the centimeter. Uh, and we would have went for two. Do I know the Ravens? And you might as well because why? They why showed Harbaugh. Mahomes? They showed Harbaugh. He's yeah. like, we're going for two. Like he's like, let's yeah. fucking go for the win right and, here. And it's I, only two yards. Let's go get it. Exactly. When you got Mahomes, right? You you might as well try to win with Mahomes not on the field than to kick an extra point and then have him. I would have been. I would have died on that sword. We've died on that sword plenty of times. Yep. Green Bay, the steel, like so. Yeah. So just for awful. the record, I do want to note that the penalties and the yardage, I, I agree with your sentiment that there were a lot of missed calls on the Chiefs. I think there was a statistic last year that there wasn't a single holding throughout the entire playoffs on the Chiefs' offensive yeah. line, which was ridiculous. But tonight, the discrepancy wasn't that bad as far as actual calls. So seven penalties for the Ravens, six for the Chiefs. The yardage was 64 to 45. So it's not that Bad. I mean, 19 yards is a pretty big difference, but I agree that, you know, the early false starts or illegal formations that were called, I think on yeah, was it Ronnie Stanley so, or Orlando Brown, whoever it was, so many illegal they weren't formations. making the same call against Juwan Taylor, who's doing the exact same thing. And it's like, you have yeah. to call it both ways. Um, but right, I want to look at Mahomes really quick. I know it's going to be hard to talk about him, but we have to talk about him. Well, actually, let me just ask you this. What's your relationship to him? Like, is this a person that you hate? Because I was, I've been thinking about my relationship to, you know, these athletes specifically. Like, I used to hate Stephen Curry so fucking much because I just yeah, felt like you know, him and Durant to were together. It was inevitable. LeBron wasn't going to be able to get over that hump. You know, I, I, I try not to hate these people anymore. So I'm trying to learn to love Mahomes, and I love the way that he plays. But there's little mannerisms of his that just tick me off. Like when he goes like this, and it looks like he's, you know, finger banging oxygen. I'm not super pumped whenever he does that. And then yeah, he just keeps reminding me. It's like, oh, he's still that guy. Um, so what are your thoughts on him? Just like, do you despise him? The, there, it's So there's been players that I, I really hate and have said just – and it was – at first it was Brady, and, and then it was Steph Curry for a while, and then it was uh, – I really hated Draymond Green, and – you know, Mahomes is starting to get to that level of, of hate because he, he he played – he didn't do anything crazy special. I mean, he played well. Um, but I will always say this. I will I will hate people, but I will always give them their flowers. I hated Brady's guts so bad. But I, if some random guy came up to me and asked me who's the greatest quarterback of all time, I'd always say Brady. I've, I've never sure. been blinded by hate. When I hated Steph Curry and he was driven, I would, you know, hate him to death – always tell people he's the best shooter of all time. Same with Mahomes. It's getting that way. And uh, I just want someone to knock the fucking shit out of him just once, man. Just Real to really tried. get humbled. 
Rooker was holding. trying his best. Oh, yeah, and then and then to again and and the one time he got hit late, they didn't throw the flag. That yeah, was the weird. one time to throw a flag against the Ravens, and so again, like it was so bad last year. It looks like the refs are gonna be just as bad this year. Um, yeah, I, I I'm it's getting to a point where now I can't wait to see him again because these guys are gonna be so pissed off, so fucking hungry, and you just gotta. Shake. He never gets shaken up at all. Like he never gets touched. He throws the ball his way or he scrambles. You gotta get one in there somehow, some way. But I mean, yeah, it's, he's he's fucking. He's all time. He's a new Tom Brady. So what are you gonna do? You gotta beat him. You gotta somehow get him out of there. He wasn't extraordinary tonight, but he was good enough. And I can't remember who made the point, but they essentially said that if you're going to beat him, you have to play your best game, and he has to have an average game for him. That's the equation to beat Mahomes. Like your quarterback needs to have the game of their fucking life. Then he needs to play just average because most of the time he's always going to be elite. And that's his average. His average is elite. He just doesn't make those mistakes anymore. He's mastered that blend of I'm a surgeon in the pocket. And then I'm an artist outside of it, which is the most important skill for a quarterback to have. And I think Lamar is getting there to a certain extent. There are other guys that are, you know, 60% of where he's at in both of those departments, but that's what it is. It's being a surgeon and it's being an artist. Um, A couple of other guys that we got to talk about tonight. Some of the bigger name players going into this game, that I'm sure a lot of people had a lot of money on, you know, their, their props, their player props, all of that kind of stuff. Zay Flowers, Travis Kelsey, Isaiah Pacheco, and Derrick Henry. Those four guys were less relevant in this game then Isaiah Likely, Xavier Worthy, yeah. and Rasheed Rice. That I found fascinating. Like Henry, 13 rushes, 46 <laughs> yards. He had the first touchdown of the season. Awesome. First touchdown of the NFL season. That was fucking brilliant first drive. Zay Flowers, six catches, 37 yards. Travis Kelsey, three catches, 34 yards. And then Pacheco, 15 rushes, 45 yards. Three yards a carry. He also got a touchdown similar to Henry. But I was shocked by this. Were you shocked at all by this? Or is this more a result of both of these defenses are going to be, you know, top five to top six defenses and they keyed in on those players? Or are you worried yeah. about some of these guys? No, I'm not. So, yeah, I knew there's going to be a lot of talk about Henry. The thing is, I, people don't understand how good uh, Spagnola is. I knew that he, he always. You can't, you just, he's not going to let you beat you the way that, like the obvious way of beating you. Henry will get reps. He'll get touches. He'll get breakoff runs. The Chiefs are just really good defensively. And Spagnola's got a whole fucking three months to, to game plan against that. Um, Zay Flowers, it's, yeah, he, a lot of, a lot of targets, not the, you know, six receptions. He, he needs to, he's going to be, our guy, he, he's going to be the true number one. Because Bateman, I mean, yeah, great catch, but just a lot of just not, you know, I think we got Aguilar, just not what we wanted at receiver. And then Pacheco, yeah, he's, he's got some miles on him, um, you know, and, and Kelsey might be, again, it's only one game. And again, also on the Chiefs side of the ball, the Ravens defense is going to be up there, you know, top five, top three. So you can't judge too much off of it, but Kelsey's getting older. Is gonna get in some miles. I, I don't know. Maybe Worthy looks fucking fast. Looks good. <laughs> the fucking I mean, top yeah. light behind you is so fucking funny, right? Yeah, now. This is, yeah. This I is just, just remember. Wild. Out of I, I don't. I don't even know. We're, we're talking about yeah. Travis Kelsey being a little bit fatter and a little bit slower, <laughs> and, and somebody is just doing. <laughs> yeah, somebody's just hammered doing the fucking uh, what's it called walk. The fucking. I mean, uh, they've been back there for a while. It looks like they're clearing it up now. Maybe it was just yeah. a speeding ticket. I'm not sure. What what would be fucking awesome is if they come to my door and say, "Hey, buddy, this is an empty parking lot. Get the fuck out of here." <laughs> and oh, are they gonna come? Oh, I would I would love that. But <laughs> yeah, it's hard to judge both sides of the ball with their big players because two defenses are really good. But <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I I mean, Henry's gonna get in there. Zay's gonna get in there. I'm sure yep. Kelsey's gonna be fine. He's gonna find yep. the ball. Um, but yeah, it's a new season. New team, new rookies. You know, and I got to highlight um, some defenders really quick before we move on. Um, Chris Jones, sack, forced fumble tonight. 
just a fucking monster. Reesberg and I, when we previewed kind of our awards at the beginning of the year, I highlighted him as um, a defensive player of the year pick that I like a lot. I think it was like plus 6,000. Um, might even been higher than that. With Aaron Donald out of the league, like he is clearly the best interior defensive lineman. And he was playing all over the place again tonight. He was on the edge. He was on the inside. He was like cherry picking what matchups he wanted. Like when the rookie right guard came in, or I think it was the right tackle, actually. He was like, I'm just going to go bully that guy for a few snaps. So he's still, you know, the peak of his powers. Um, it's early in the season. It's week one, so he doesn't have all of his conditioning there. He played a lot of snaps, but I love me some fucking Chris Jones. And then Roquan, I think he's just the best in inside linebacker in the NFL. If it's not him, then it's Fred Warner. Um, there aren't a lot of other guys that I would rather have other than Roquan. He's just a fucking dog. Um, and then... It was Jalen Watson was I, I, I'm not sure if he's a rookie. I, I, I'm not very familiar with him. He's a younger corner slash safety. He's a member of the secondary. I can't recall, but nine total tackles for him all over the field. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's a group where we always focus on the offense for the most part between these two teams. But I just think we have to show a little bit of love to the defenders, too. But some guys that were not missing, but less impactful than I probably would have anticipated. Kyle Hamilton, who I think might be one of the best defenders in the league, period. Like, he's a hybrid safety that plays all over the field. And then you mentioned it earlier, but Marlon Humphrey, dude, just giving up that ball to Xavier Worthy. I'm not sure what's going on with him. I thought he was one of the elite corners in the league a few years ago. Um, I'm not sure I would still have him in that realm. Um, Again, just one game. Uh, definitely some miscommunication with, uh, I mean, yeah, we, we lose, uh, we still got Roquan there. Uh, there's going to be some adjustments on the defensive end. Um, there's a new corner. He's a rookie. You st- I think his name's Wiggins out of Iowa yep. State. You still got Marlow. You still got Brandon Stevens, but like blown coverage with Worthy. Um, just, I don't know what, if he thought Hamilton was going to be up there. I'm not worried a ton. Um, again, this is, I'm, we're judging our whole season so far. I'm playing arguably the best team in the league. So you can't draw too much off of it, but, um, yeah, we got to figure some shit out that, that needs to be, I mean, that's seven points. That's just a free seven points that we free lost seven by. points. It was so for, easy from, too. like, he just yeah, walked I know. in, um, Wiggins, I, I mean, believe it's a it's from Clemson, coverage just for, and oh, TJ, he is from Clemson. TJ Tampa though. You guys got him too. He's the Iowa State kid and he's going to be a stud. Okay. So maybe he's injured. I'm not sure what his situation is, but it, it was so confusing because I texted him in the chat and I was like, was that Marlon's fault or no, was there he, supposed to be a safety high? Like, cause I couldn't tell if you're in cover two, I mean, that outside corner is supposed to guard the flat. So like right at the line of scrimmage, any like check downs over to the cornerback, anything over the top of the tight end he's responsible for. And there's supposed to be a safety high. So that could be uh, Marcus Williams or it could be Hamilton. That's supposed to go with a deep ball receiver, whether it's a post to the inside, he can trail that. Or if it's a tight end on like an out route, he can go to that. Or if it's a go ball to Xavier fucking worthy, the one guy on the field that runs a four two one forty. It's like, you got to stick with that guy, Marlon. And I think he just might've gotten lazy. Um, because like, or it was just a breakdown of communication, but it looked like man yeah. for a second. He, it's not, it's not laziness. It, it just can't, it, it just simply can't be that. Now he, he hundred percent, I think thought someone was picking him up now, whether there should have been someone, obviously someone else's fault or he fucked up and should have known that there was no one going to come help that's whose fault it is but it definitely wasn't laziness but yeah it's just that was on like a third down and i mean to be honest with you, I, th- I thought it was over after that for them to, to go back and, and put up three and get a stop and then uh, again a, a centimeter away I, I i was happy i was i was satisfied they, they showed some fight a lot of teams after that happened you go up seven twenty seven seventeen. I mean, you give up a blown yep. cut. Yeah. To, to come back and quote unquote at one point tie it, you know, on the field, a touchdown <laughs> taken away. Just hey, tough, it's, it's but, one and oh yeah. and oh and one. That that's the thing here. So like I, we'll be all right. Um we'll yeah. move on to the rest of the week and we'll we'll go fast through some of these games because it's getting late. But 
I mean, we got a game tomorrow night or tonight when people are listening to this. So we have more football to look forward to. The NFL yep. crashing Friday night. They're saying, fuck the high schoolers. Let's go. We're going to give you a game in it's Brazil. In like Brazil. Yeah. It's Packers and the Eagles. You know, two of the top five teams in the NFC. Uh, let me pull up the spreads really quick. I have them right here. Um, it's two. First, the Philadelphia Eagles are favored by two points. You get the Packers at plus 114 money line. This is an interesting matchup because these two teams facing off this early in the season, they're coming off of last season, two totally different situations, right? Packers yeah. started out really slow. I think they were like two and five in their first seven, something odd. And then the Eagles were 10 and one. Their last 10 games, the Packers went seven and three, while the Eagles went four and six. If you go even closer and you do the Eagles' last seven games, they were one and six in their last seven games. They lost to Tampa Bay and Baker Mayfield in the wild card round when they were favored Baker. by like eight and a half points. And then the other angle of this is Jalen Hurts and Jordan Love are in a light skin battle for the ages. Who do you like? Actually, two two actually, points with the Eagles. I actually like the Eagles here. Um, I think that. The Packers might have got – they were playing good, but they, they might have been a little – they might might have been riding a little bit of a high on last season. Maybe reality sets in a little bit. And I think – I mean, holy fuck, if there, was ever, if there ever was a wake-up call for Philly, it was a first-round exit to the Bucks. I think they're pissed off. I think they're so fucking – they know if they come out and, and, and lay an egg, it, it's going to be hell. And then, you know, we, we forget to mention they kind of just added quite possibly the best running back yep. in the league up for debate, top three, top five. And then they also got some help on defense, which they needed uh, brutally. Um, yes. So I actually think the Eagles, um, uh, just a, a big, just bounce back. They know that if they, oh, if they drop this one, Man, Philly is gonna. They, they, this is this is all not a must win for Philly, but like this is. I think they take this one, and I, I think to, the, the Packers uh, might regress. Yes. The, but you they also clean got clean up what happened last season as, as quick as possible because last yeah. season was just a joke. The end of it. So you're like, I want to abolish that, yeah. erase it. Like it's like after you look at Pornhub, you immediately clear your browser and your search history. You're like, I don't even want to think about what I just did to myself. Like that was Jeez, so goddamn disgusting. You immediately like, say a prayer. Just God, that exactly. was the last time. I'm sorry. Like um, never again. I'll never do this again. But at the same time, like you're gonna go back to it at some point, man. Oh, and yeah. I think that's this is in the Eagles. Might be DMA. ten minutes later. So I'm going Packers money line here. I think that they're really <laughs> fucking it. good. Like I, I believe in Jordan Love, and it sucks to have, have having to admit this, but the receivers are studs. They also got a running back of their own. Aaron Jones was yeah, a little Josh bit Jacob. on the older end. They get Josh Jacobs, right? And yeah. he's going to be playing behind a much better offensive line than he was in Vegas. Same thing could be said about Saquon, though. The worst offensive line I've probably ever seen last year were the Giants. And then going to this Eagles offensive line that, despite not having Kelsey, is still a top five offensive line in the league. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, that'll be good. It'll be a weird one too. I, I know it's it's kind of funny because I was talking to my buddy who's an Eagles fan. Technically, a home game for the Eagles, which just kind of sucks. Yeah. Because uh, they draw. I mean, it's just. I mean, it's just straight up not a, a home game. But not home game. It's um, literally in Brazil. Like if anything, this yeah. is not home. It's actually for worse than an away game, and it's yeah, counted right. as a home game. You got to try. But uh, yeah, more or less should be a that should be a good one. I'm excited uh, for that. Let one. me ask you this. Whose receiving core would you rather have? Would you rather have two studs in A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, or would you rather have, like, four promising young receivers like Watson, Wicks, oh. Reed, and Dobbs? A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Okay. A.J. Brown is not – he's barely human. He's probably human yeah. by the skin of his teeth. And then, yeah, Devontae Smith is, is pretty much – I mean, that's – yeah, that's my guy. Def- that's one of my favorite players in the league. I fucking yeah, love Slim Smith. Reaper. Yeah, I know he got the captain's pads ripped, but you take AJ Brown, man. That guy. That I've watched AJ Brown do things. Yeah, when they were rolling last year, <laughs> only he DK was, Metcalf can do. His college teammates literally the only two guys or, that can do the things. Yeah, that they or do. Megatron. That's yeah. really DK Megatron and AJ Brown are in the same like. Yeah, Body give me give build. me the yeah, give me the Eagles. 
Uh, two things to keep an eye on are their new coordinators in place for Philadelphia. Kellen Moore, former offensive coordinator for the Cowboys and Chargers, former quarterback at Boise State. He's the OC now in Philly. And then Vic Fangio, former head coach of the Broncos, former defensive coordinator, I think with the Dolphins and a bunch of other places. He's their new defensive coordinator. So just keep an eye out for that. Okay. Um, the noon slate on Sunday kicks ass. Like I'm looking at the matchups this week. There's no obvious winners like across the board. I think you can make an argument for practically all 32 teams to win this weekend, or 30 teams. Now that yeah, I think. Two did teams you remember week one last season? Pretty ass. So I think they. I don't know if you remember. I remember week one being kind of ass last season. So I think they really fucking was like, oh yeah, let's make some good matches. I mean, but yeah, it's continue. insane. Like, there's like a bunch of crazy story. Like every single game that I have notes on, there's at least one storyline that it's like yeah. moderately tantalizing. There's a couple of shitty matchups, but like for the most part, we have eight games in the noon slate. So 10 a.m. your time, noon my time, to start the day. All right, we have the Steelers and Falcons first. In Atlanta, Russell Wilson is a starting quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He is not received well in Atlanta at all because of his relationship to future Hendricks. That's the first note that I have on this game. Is that applicable to an actual NFL gambling situation? I will pull up the line right here. I think the Falcons are favorite. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. I think – and I'm not just – I wouldn't take the – I'm not just taking the Falcons because I'm a Ravens fan and I, you know, prey on the Steelers' downfall. Falcons are kind of on fire, uh, or not on fire, but they got a lot. Of, it's almost like a like a Bears type deal. Uh, a lot of new pieces. Kirk, you got Bijan finally. I think they're going to use him. Drake London, um, and then yeah, I, I think you can say it doesn't affect Russ. Um, but they're going to be playing a lot of future. It might be in the back of his head a little bit. And then just again, I don't see the only thing worse than getting a bad quarterback is getting two bad quarterbacks and Steelers did it. Um, it's just unbelievable. It's just so embarrassing as an organization. Um, but yeah, you got Najee, I guess maybe he'll rush 40 times for four yards. Maybe Jalen Warren will do one, you know, HB toss. Um, JJ Watt will, will be a game wrecker and the TJ, defense will always yeah. be there. I'll, I'll, or I mean, TJ, um, I'll always, I'll always, I mean, Steelers defense, I mean, dude, that, that guy's, I think best player. I mean, fuck man. If, if I, if I were to start a franchise with someone other than Patty Mahomes Lamar, I'd probably say fucking TJ Watt. We we'll always stuck. give the Steelers defense, but the offense is just, again, you can't to win a game. You have to score more than zero, which yep. I don't know. Maybe they prove me wrong, but definitely Falcons. Okay, spread three and a half. You're willing to take the Atlanta at three oh. and a half. Yes. All right, I'm with you there. I like it. Um, this is also an Arthur Smith revenge game, and I think he might be the least like vengeful uh, person ever. He was the former <laughs> coach. He was the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons last year. Now he's the offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh. So look out yeah, for fiery I, Arthur Smith to just be raging yeah. on the sidelines. I wonder if they'll run it. Oh, no. <laughs> And I also thought this was interesting because this is a game of a bunch of guys who I personally don't think have been used correctly. You have Bijan, who's only been in the league for one year. You have Drake London, Kyle Pitts, George Pickens, yeah. and now Darnell Mooney's in Atlanta. And then if maybe Fields gets on the field, I don't know. I don't think he's been used right, but I think that he, I don't think he's a bad quarterback. I think I could see them player. going down twenty four and throwing Justin out there. Sure. Why not? He actually likes future, so maybe he'll. Perf- and he's from Georgia, so maybe he performs better in Mercedes Benz Stadium. They should, they should just start him. Why not? Fuck not. Um, all right. Next game, we have the Arizona Cardinals going to Buffalo to play the Bills. Kyler versus <sighs> That's Josh kind Allen. Of too. The Hale Murray game from four years ago. The Bills are favored by six and a half points in Buffalo. Yeah. Now here. I've got I'm gonna steal this I love this bit that Turner does on rent money. Ripley's believe it or not, Josh Allen has the most interceptions in the last five years amongst all quarterbacks. Yeah. Sixty six to... interceptions. Who are numbers two through and you guys five? Put him, like Jameis Winston. He is not one of them. <laughs> Jesus. Uh Tua? Nope. Over two. <laughs> right Jesus. Up the rip. Um it's I was not, over the, over the past five years. Over the past five seasons. It's not Jameis Winston. You didn't sneak in there. Oh, Herbert. Herbert's not one of them either. What? 
I think this uh, is Kirk Kirk Cousins? Nope. I mean, you're just fucking throwing darts and misses on the board. I'll just give them to you. Baker Mayfield is number two. He has 60 interceptions the last five seasons. Jared Goff is number three, who I actually regard as like an efficient passer. 56 interceptions. Derek Carr is number four, 53 interceptions. Matt Stafford is number five at 51. And tied for sixth at 50 interceptions. Matt Ryan, who hasn't played a fucking football game in a year and a half. That- and, Patrick, and Patrick Mahomes, 50 interceptions. I just thought that was fascinating. I'm not even that mad at that. I would have never guessed. That's wild. That is I mean, wild. I would never would have guessed either. I might have gotten Baker, but I definitely wasn't guessing Goff, Carr, Stafford. So that shocked no. me. Um, but yeah, this is going to be our first look at Josh Allen in Buffalo without a real true number one wide receiver. Stephon Diggs is now in Houston. He's working with Keon Coleman, Khalil Shakir, and then Dalton Fine. Kincaid and James Cook. I am anticipating that Buffalo becomes a more run heavy team this year and i think that might be good for them i think james cook is a stud you have two badass tight ends in kincaid and knox you have a solid offensive line and you have the second best rushing quarterback in the league in josh allen and then my other note on this game marvin harrison jr i love him i think he's gonna be a fucking stud and i think the bills cornerback room is pretty weak i'm not sure what his props are looking like but i would fucking hammer them take 80 plus yards you know six catches maybe a touchdown he's easily the number one option in this offense i expect kyler to feed me some maserati marv yeah i i could see that i i just don't trust a lot of hype a lot of empty hype around the cardinals i I don't buy anything the cardinals uh, I need to see a lot of the Cardinals before I start betting on them. Like I would take the Bills, the spread. Um, I just like, is there a defense in Arizona? I don't think uh, really. And then also, again, Kyler played uh, four, played three, four games maybe of the end of last season. Um, I'm not buying anything out of Arizona. I get a lot of Arizona like. Uh, input from going to ASU like a lot of the kids like yep. Arizona and they are so high on and I'm just like what do you guys like basic like you guys were I don't know I'm not believing any of it till I see it it'd be cool to see uh, Marvin Harrison go dummy and obviously you know believe in him and I, I like him a lot but as far as winning the game and the spread and all that not buying any of it until until I see it I think the, yeah I think the bills I'm not in on them either but I'm going to go against you here. I just think six and a half is a lot of points. I'll take plus six and a half. Um, I'm not sure they can win the game, which kind of goes against my rule. I usually don't take underdogs with the spread unless I think they can win. But you know what? Maybe I can talk myself into it. Um, I'll go plus six and a half with Arizona. You got the Bills minus six and a half. The next game, uh, I'm going to put the timer on. We cannot talk about this game for more than five minutes. Tennessee Titans are visiting the Chicago Bears in Chicago. It is Caleb Williams' debut. The Chicago Bears are home favorites. A lot. Three and a half points. I'm putting the timer on right now. We have five minutes to talk about it. Give me I Tennessee never, plus I mean, four. You. Get the fuck out of here. Shut up. You, I give you your Raven. I have never been this excited for a football game in my entire goddamn life. Literally never. I have been alive for 26 years. I'm praying to make it to 27 here in the next few months. And I have never rooted for a quarterback that has ever given me the chills. I watched the trailer for the video today with a couple of my colleagues who are also Bears fans. And I said aloud, I just blurted aloud at the end of it. I said, my nipples are raging hard. Like, absolutely rock solid. I I, I don't know how I'm going to act, how I'm going to behave. I, I, it's like I'm discovering oh, a new me. It's almost going to be like, uh, you know, at, like somebody takes acid for the first time, and then they're a whole new person the next day. That's going to be me, except having a quarterback. And a quarterback that I believe in. Because with Justin Fields, it was a whole lot of hope, right? I was always hoping he would figure out, hoping he would get it. With Caleb, I know it. I feel it in my fucking bones. He is going to be the guy. He is the prince who was promised. Bears by three and a half. Let's fucking roll. I cannot wait. Yeah, I I was just just messing. Um, I think... uh, yeah, I, I want I want you guys to win. I know a lot of you guys that are Bears fans. I think it's exciting. It's fun. It's, you know, give them some momentum. I don't think Tennessee is as bad of a team. They're not. They're solid. They're solid, but I'll say this. for the It's a very winnable game 
for the Bears. It's not like they're playing Green Bay in the first game of the, the season. This is a very winnable game. It's an Bears. important game. It's and, an important game because it's like it's like you said with the Eagles. Oh, it's not man, a must let, win. Let but if they win this egg. game, the let, trajectory, it's just like it's way too much promise. It's way too much hope. And, you know, three and a half points is a lot of points. And like you said, the Titans aren't bad. The, Their receiving room, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, and Tyler Boyd. Three studs. Three former players. They, like, you know, they got a little guy named Tony Pollard. Yep. Not uh, bad. So, I like yeah, not too. a – yeah, a lot of people like Will Levis this year. I think – what the fuck was I going to say? Um, oh, yeah, even more than the Eagles, the, this is a – like this is almost like a playoff game for the Bears. I, like I just – let them land egg, man. And, oh, God, man, is, is it going to rain? I, I do want them to win. I want you guys to be happy. I want you guys to have fun. You're excited for a reason. And at the end of the day, they do. There, there's a there's a reason. It's not a bluff. It's he looked good in the preseason, and I don't think you guys have ever. There's very few rookies that have had more talent surrounding them, as far as I don't think any, wide especially outs. for n- number one overall picks. Like number yeah. one overall picks are zero and fourteen and one in their first campaign as a starter, right? But, yeah. But I think he's one of one because at the same time, he's going against a rookie head coach, and I would not be half as confident as I am right now going into this game if and Mike Vrabel was still Chicago. fucking, you know, chewing nails for the Titans. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what Callahan is going to be like caps. as a coach. Yeah, I mean, Mike Vrabel is just oh, a no, badass. Oh, no, is that Campbell? Yeah. That was Campbell. But, you know, same aura, right. right? Like, same vibe. Yeah. So I I just feel like, all right, we're going against a rookie head coach. Like, he's got to prove himself. <laughs> you know, there's no expectations for Tennessee, which is dangerous, but – I don't very know, man. Winnable. We're talking about our offense a lot. It's, I think our defense is going to be fucking astounding. I think we have one of the best yeah. secondaries in the league. Great linebacking duo and a decent defensive line, but the secondary will give them enough time and coverage to yeah. be able to go get a quarterback like Levis. Yeah. I love it. I'm just going to say it right now. Uh, my prop for this game, I'm taking Bears money line, Caleb Williams to throw for more than 250 yards, and I'm taking him to take, throw two touchdowns. So... I don't know what the exact numbers on that are. If I had estimated, it'd probably be like plus 430. Uh, I but say, I absolutely I adore yeah, it. I like that a lot. I'm excited to watch that game. I am. What's your TV setup for a Sunday? <laughs> do you just go rock one TV and just go straight red zone? Do you do two TVs? I'll be at my boy Adrian's in Monterey. We'll no longer be homeless by Sunday. Good for um, you. Yeah, one TV red zone, one TV, usually whatever. Walking out game. favorite. Yeah, my game's over for the week. So, yeah, you pick one game that you want to lock in, and then you got Red Zone just filtering through fucking awesomeness. So I'll have myself seated right here and Pete yeah, like probably have the to Bears the left of me. On, I'll have the Bears yeah, game on Big TV, Red Zone on Little TV, and then when we get to the afternoon slate, which we'll talk about in a second, that's when we go. We flip it. We go Red Zone up yeah. top on the Big TV, and then whatever game we want to lock in on in the afternoon. It doesn't get much and better than that, boom, man. There you go. Doesn't that's five get minutes much right better. There. All right. Next game, we don't have to spend a lot of time on this one. But I do want to say that this is the biggest line of the weekend. The Bengals are favored by eight points at home against the New England Patriots. The Patriots are plus 330 money line. Uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yeah, that's pretty tough. You're fucking old. We are old as shit. Gerard Mayo will be making his coaching debut for the New England Patriots. The first time somebody has been the head coach for the Patriots since, you know, what, Bill Belichick, I think, joined in like 99, 2000. Yeah. I feel old we were because barely alive. Gerard Mayo, I remember playing NCAA football with him when he was at Tennessee and he was a middle linebacker. I wrecked shit with him at the middle of the defense. And I was just going to be coaching the Patriots. Yeah. And it's like, God damn it, man. This is what my life he, has come to. I know. It's it's sad. It's we're, I, Yeah, we're turning the page. We start to say these kids. You know, that's when now you know. Like, if you start saying these kids, it's not a good thing. Yeah. Like, you don't want to be saying these kids. No, we can't be saying um, that. We got to take that out of the vernacular. No, it's bad. Um, I mean, look at me. I'm fucking – I still <laughs> look like and act like a child. So I, I, I shouldn't too. be. It's a rest um, of development. It's all right. Yeah. I fucking uh, – I don't want to – you know, I, w- I would go Bengals – Plus or minus eight and a half. Eight. Usually, when it's that big, you might you might as well go with the the wave or whatever or with it. But I mean, yeah. Why would I take? There's a rookie quarterback. There's a rookie coach. 
It'll be Brissett that's starting. Brissett starting. Drake May will still be on the bench. But at the same time, it's like he doesn't inspire that much confidence in me. Yeah, Yeah, literally. (laughs) That's literally even worse. (laughs) Um, And I think with Burrow not playing, Burrow, this is the chance to – he he want there's no chance to there's no reason to hold back he's been he's been chomping to play for almost you know over a year so why not go out and beat the pats 40 to 10 mm. why not I'm with you let's fucking right so, minus eight and a half baby i'm with you yeah why not all right Bengals spread got it all right next game dude uh fucking nut this is maybe my favorite game of the weekend and maybe i'm just a sicko uh AFC South divisional matchup. The Houston Texans are going to, I think it's Lucas Oil Stadium, to play the Indianapolis Colts. Oh, I love I, that. That's a great game, too. That's I am great so game. fired up for this game, dude. Yeah. Ripley's Believe It or Not, the Colts are 0-9-1 and and in their last 10 opening day games. Oh, give and me the Colts, then. The AFC South is cool for the first time in forever, and it is large part due to C.J. Stroud, and Anthony Richardson. I cannot wait to watch either of these guys play football. Like, this, yeah, is, a, this is me right here. I'm going – it's going to be hard for me to keep my eyes off of that when it's, like, on the TV. I might not even do red zone. I might just do Bears right here and then – Yeah, it's such Texans a good game. Up there. There's just so many storylines with that, too. I mean, you got, you got Diggs there now. You got a second year for C.J. Stroud to settle in. And then – the three, four games that A. Rich played, uh, I mean, I remember I had him in fantasy. He put up like 26 <laughs> points. At, oh, my God. I thought, I mean, fuck, man, if he stayed healthy, he might have very well gotten rookie of the year over Stroud. I think the games that he was playing, he was in in charge. Um, so what's this? How much are they? Or it's in, it's in Indy? Are they a home dog? They're a home dog. The Texans are favored by two and a half. Oh, dude. I love the Colts. All I right. love the Colts. Jonathan Taylor's back. You got Pittman healthy. I think Downs is out. Um, yeah, maybe Houston still has to figure a couple things out with a new running back and mix in with how do they kind of – does Nico, Diggs, Tank Dell, does that kind of confuse them a little bit uh, start, uh, to begin – I don't know. I like you know, Game, And not just a, two uh, up-and-coming quarterbacks, but two up-and-coming coaches. I love D'Amico Ryan, yep. and I love Shane Steichen. Studs, both of them. Two totally different yeah, ways. Loves D'Amico's Ryan's. the head coach. He runs the defense. Shane Steichen's the head coach. He runs the offense. So it's going to be a battle of wits between that matchup, which is going to be really fun. Um, I'm going to go with the Texans here. I'll take them by two and a half. I've just bought into their hype way too much for me to sell on it week one. I think Stroud is the guy. Uh, I think he's a top five, top six quarterback. And that receiving room, it's tough, man. And I like the Colts' defense. I do. But I think the secondary is probably the weakest part of it. Uh, they got Kenny Moore and a bunch of other guys that I cannot name, which is rare for yeah, me because I love me some secondaries. Uh, I think they lost Rocky Sin, maybe. I'm not sure. But, yeah, I'll take the Texans here. All right, next matchup, we have the Jags going to Miami to play the Dolphins. And the battle for Florida. We had Miami and Florida in college football last week. Now we got Jacksonville and Miami. Trevor versus Tua. The Miami Dolphins are favored by three and a half points in Miami against the Jags. Oh, dude, give me, give me Miami. I, yeah. I don't fucking. I also don't buy anything. The Jags for Miami to be home. Yes, it's in it's in Florida. I, what the fuck are what what is promising about the Jags compared to last year? I couldn't tell you. Did they get anybody? Did they get Deontay? No, Deontay went to the Panthers. Uh, they ETA. drafted a guy that I'm really high on. He was Malik Neighbors' teammate at LSU, Brian Thomas Jr. I think he's oh, an absolute yeah, yeah. stud. And all of these rookie receivers, you know, they come in and they fucking make a splash right away. Like, Zay was like the 23rd pick last year, and he was yeah, crucial he for Baltimore's offense. First, yeah, so did Hollywood when he got drafted. Um, I just don't – yeah, Miami sucks in the playoffs, but – in the regular season at home, they still scored like 90 a week. Yeah. And Jacksonville, for them to only be, uh, what would you say, minus three and a half? Minus three. Minus three. Yeah, I still, I still don't love Trevor Lawrence. Didn't do really 
anything last year. I think he was hurt for a little bit, but uh, yeah, for sure Miami. That's that might even be like quote unquote my pick of the the week. I don't know what I'm missing there, but yeah, the I mean who, the Dolphins didn't really lose. Still got possibly the best receiver in, in the whole league. The yep. fastest. They got that new guy to the rookie running back who ran the. Yeah, give me Miami all day. By three, that's that seems too easy. I'm with you. We'll go with Miami here. Yeah, uh, we're gonna spend less than a minute on these two games combined. Um, the Panthers are going to New Orleans to play the Saints. The Saints are favored by three and a half. We take the Saints, right? Yeah, I, I don't. Oh, that's such a. Yeah, I don't know. Car or no? Maybe I don't fucking. No, no, give me, give me the Panthers. Is I, I read this. Deont, they're going to run the offense through Deontay. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going on. And then the really accented, <laughs> the, the, the really, the really crazy Southern accent dude out of South Carolina. Fuck it. All right, um, you get a plus four. I mean, yeah, Saints you know, stank. Saints stank. Carp, you stank. Carp Saints stinks stank. like shit. Uh, yeah, next game is Vikings boy. are going to New York. They're going to MetLife to play the Giants. I guess they're going to New Jersey. That's Vikings, the worst Giants, game. and the Giants, I think, are favored. Vikings are favored by one and a half. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't bet on this game. Sam Donald my, there's versus just, Daniel Jones. If you bet on this game, you have a uh, serious problem. We're still going to. There's nothing this. certain. There's just not a certain thing. I guess give me the the Giants at I'm home. I'm with you. At, at least you have a quarterback that's been in the system with a new toy in neighbors. And I, I don't need who's running the ball in New York. Singletary, Devin Singletary. That's and so bad. That's this is an opportunity so for me to give you a shout out to uh, their backup running back. His name is Tyrone Tracy Jr. He attended the University of Iowa at the same time, at the same time that I did. We had a poetry class together, and I remember him wow. writing a poem where that's he said. Touching. I think the first two lines in it were bright lights, big stage, Roger Goodell calling my name. And I'm like, God damn, Tyrone. I, I hope crazy. you make it one day. That's crazy. He, he had CTE that early on in his uh, career. Well, he he was a wide receiver originally, and then he He's transferred. He get promoted for, very quickly. He transferred to Purdue, and then they moved him to running back. And he's a very explosive athlete. I think he's a stud. So I'd rather see him in the backfield than Devin Singletary. Oh, yeah, I Singletary him here sucks, man. He'll he'll get you two points a week in fantasy, and then one week he'll put up forty. So you just play him again, and he just gets you two points again. It's the worst fucking thing. Um, but yeah, I, I would take yeah, I'd take Giants. All right, we're both on the Giants by one and a half yeah, against the Vikings. Very sad with Minnesota, but yeah, yeah. All right, now we're moving in the afternoon slate. We got four games in the afternoon. First one, we have the Raiders going to visit their division rival, the Los Angeles Chargers. In Harbaugh's debut with the Chargers, uh, and the Chargers are favored by three points against the Vegas Raiders. It's another really – I guess it's just going to be a good year for the NFL. I Great like the Raiders. The NFL. Um, I think you the, like Raiders, the Raiders – and I love oh, the Chargers. Okay, okay. I don't I don't trust anything Herbert does yet. Uh, not that what's-his-name is any better. Minshew? But I, I think – yeah, I, I think Minshew is – has it has the swag to pull off a, a, a week one victory, and I just think the Raiders defense is fucking really up there now with Crosby and, and all these guys and Christian Wilkins they signed I, in the offseason. Yeah, they're, they're turn they're turning a page. And again, I, I love Harbaugh, obviously part of the family. You know, he's my he's my brother in law, but first game might be a little bit stuff misplaced. The, the eyes aren't the eyes aren't dotted, T's aren't crossed. Zamir White, love him. Raiders the, sleep this one out. The arguments that we made for the Eagles and the Bears and the first week being a little bit bigger for them than it might be for other teams. If the Chargers lose this game, they have no chance of making the playoffs. None whatsoever. They have to win this game. And you know they lost Keenan Allen. They lost Mike Williams. So that receiver room is a lot oh, of Josh yeah. Palmer Raiders. and a lot of Lad McConkey. They lost Austin Eckler. Uh, yeah. So it, it's it's not as I mean, but they did get they did get your Ravens running backs. They got Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. They tr- went from one hard to the I next. I say this with as as most respect as possible. Again, I love the guy. Chargers fans, trust me. J.K. will get hurt. I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's a tragedy. Just it's a tragedy. We'll just um, yeah. 
this is just a bet it, on Harbaugh and Herbert it. for me. But like, yeah, it's okay. It's Harbaugh. It's Herbert. I love it. Uh, Khalil yeah, they Mack call it the had, West Coast Ravens or whatever. I, I keep yep. seeing that. Those fuckers. Have fun with them. Have, you know, do your thing. All right. Next afternoon game, we have the Broncos going to Seattle against the Seahawks. And the Seahawks are favored by five and a half over Sean Payton and Bo Nix and the Denver Broncos. Five and I and a love points. the Broncos. I'm a big Bo Nix guy. Really? Why? He's married. He's got a good he? head on his shoulder. He sits in on defensive meetings to no schemes. No I guess he's like 33 years old. Almost a kid. I think he surprises a lot of people this year. Give me Denver. That's the only reason. Why'd you, why'd you pick Denver? Bo Nix is married, man. Give it to me. <laughs> That's all I got. But honestly, I love it. I love that pick. You Seattle, know what? I'm gonna take it. Is fucking in Seattle. Lockett? Does Lockett still play? Probably does. <laughs> I catches. And he's a real estate salesman. Did you know that he's a real estate agent? Oh, on dude, his I'm Instagram, if he's scrolling through the Broncos, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take the Seahawks because I Bo just... Nix is married. Uh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I can't. He's like wait. 25, he 26. Good. He's he just got to the NFL. His wife better be. He's a very focused. Rocket. Should be uh, like Zach Wilson's or whatever. Should be. I think it is. All right. She is. So you got the Broncos at plus six. I got the Seahawks at minus five and a half. Deal. I like Mike McDonald a lot. He was your defensive coordinator last year. He's now the head coach in Seattle. I think he's a fucking oh. stud. Um, I, know I think their defense yeah, is very toolsy. They got, some, they got some serious dogs over there. I love the corners. Uh, and then the offense, you know, it's Geno Smith, another year in the system, going against a rookie quarterback. He still has Metcalf. I hope that we get a lot less Lockett and a lot more Jackson Smith and Jigba and a lot more Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker can stay healthy. He should be a 1,300-yard rusher this year. I mean, he's a stud. Uh, so, I, yeah, yeah. I'll, go, I'll go with the Seahawks here. All right, we actually have a lot of uh, reciprocating We're going picks, each other. which is good. Yeah. yeah, I like that, though. It makes it more it's, – it's no fun if we all just pick the same shit. Yeah. All right, Dallas Cowboys are going to Cleveland. This game will be on Fox in the afternoon. The reason I mentioned that – Tom Brady's first game as an announcer, the Browns are favored by two and a half against the Dallas Cowboys. Give me the boys. Favorites. Give me the boys. We're both riding with Brady uh, here. Yeah, I, it's regular season, which means the which means the Cowboys are the best team ever. And I still don't think Deshaun. I don't know if there's really any or was what Flacco. You might as well play Flacco. He is in Indianapolis now. That's what I thought. So, and Deshaun's back. Don't love him there at all. And Chubb's still out. Give me the boys. CD's back. Dak's back. Give me the – I don't think that's a – yeah, it's a way. I I think that's a very winnable game for Dallas. And I don't believe in Deshaun Watson. Nick Chubb's out. Yeah, you got Miles Garrett and all, you know, the, the dogs on defense. But Dallas is amazing. In the regular season, give me – I think that's very doable for a couple points. CeeDee Lamb is probably my favorite player in the league. That isn't a I Chicago Bear. Uh, just absolutely flawless swagger. Like the coolest first down celebration of all time. Yeah. And we're getting to the point – are you nervous over there? What's wrong? There's a car parked pretty close. You might see a yeah. live mugging. You think? No. I'll go down Do swinging been- too. They're not touching me. Okay. Holy shit. The Raven, the Ravens just lost. You know how much fucking anger I have to, to let out of this body. I hope they fucking come over here and ask my wallet. Anyways, oh, yes, yeah, the Lambs dog. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're both going the Cowboys here. We're both going Road Dogs. Uh, we'll go with the last game of the afternoon slate. We got the Washington Commanders. Jaden Daniels rookie debut. He's going to Tampa Bay to play the Buccaneers, and the Buccaneers. How much? Three and a half points. Oh, give me the. What do you think? Uh, Rookie quarterback geez. going to Baker World. Mike really Evans, like another Baker year with 1,000 to... yards and coming. Rashad uh, White, Chris Godwin. Yeah, give me the box. I, I love. Oh, yeah, Godwin's back. I think Baker's pretty underrated, and he just got paid, so he's not worried about too much. He won a playoff game last year. I'm yeah, just going to throw I, that I, out there. They beat the Eagles flat out. Yeah. And I love Jaden Daniels this year, but 
first game. I mean, Washington's O line. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't follow the Commanders' news. Pretty. Uh, I don't think they got that much better. Um, yeah, I think the Bucks could handle that rookie quarterback in a, you know, at, at their home, home field. Is that fucking Sunday night? No, Sunday night. No, I'm going with the Bucks as well. Have, oh, it's Sunday the Rams, night. Lions. is okay. tasty. Rams at Detroit playoff rematch, January 14th, 2024. The Rams 23, the Lions 24. Goff, Stafford, McVay, Dan Campbell, nut. Detroit is favored by four and a half fucking points. God damn, that's fat. Is it though? I mean, I think the- it is. I think the Rams are good. I know that they lost like the best football player of all time, not named Lawrence Taylor or Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes. I get that, and I believe in Detroit. But I, you, we've talked about it enough, I think, in the group chat. I'm a Stafford believer. I'm a Stafford truther. And I think Cooper Cup has a big return, and I think Sean McVay is the best coach in football now that Bill Belichick is retired. Okay. I don't, they lost I don't by one any last year, 23 to 24. I, now we're going to four and a half all of a sudden? Yeah, I really do like Sean McVay, but you got to somehow contain – Gibbs, Amon Ra, Laporta, Jameson, who I'm very high on this year, Laporta. Everybody's healthy, and then again you have, yeah, you got Cup, you got Pua, uh, Puka, who wasn't exactly an All Star with Cup on the field at the same time. Give me lines. I mean, shit, I don't, I don't know. I think I he kind of was. I, I think he had like 180 yards in that playoff game where Cup was out there. And Cup was really? limited, but yeah, Maybe Puka I'm was still completely balling, dude. wrong with that. I, I just don't I, – I see it very – for Detroit to go out and win by a touchdown, I feel like that's a very – it's in Detroit, right? It is in Detroit. Yeah, give me the Lions minus four and a half. All right, I got Rams yeah, we plus are, four and a half. Yeah, we're really – this is going to be an exciting – We'll match it up. Uh, we'll put a graphic out, and we'll see how we turn out. Yeah, you know, this is something we keep receipts. track of all year. Uh, yeah. All right, Monday night football. I mean, God, they just killed it with the Sunday night and Monday night games, and even the Thursday night game, and even the Friday night game. Monday night, we have the New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers and that dumb fuck of a coach, Robert Sala, going to San Francisco to play the 49ers. This is the second year in a row that the Jets have been on Monday night football to open the season. We all know how <laughs> last year went. Uh, the Jets actually beat the Bills in that game where Rodgers got hurt. I know. Please believe it or bad. not. Uh, but bang, bang, Niner gang, man. They're back. I, Iuk, Debo, Trent, everybody I, extended, everybody ready to roll. Let me figure out the line here. I don't even know what it is. Four and a I half. I think it's four Niners. and a half, yeah. So I will actually be in attendance at this game. Yes, you will. My my buddy has, shout out Adrian Mendoza, has season tickets, text me, hey, you want to come out for the first Niners game? I said, I'm homeless. Fuck it. <laughs> I'll be there. You might be the only homeless guy in attendance at that game. Yep. Can very one. possibly be yes. And I, you know, I'll, I'll walk that. I'll wear that on my my sleeve. Um, I, for the purpose of, eh, you know, I'm taking Niners because uh, I'll be there, and I think it's it's going to be very fun to bet with them as you're in there and the crowd and it's happening. I, I don't think you can really take the Jets. Uh, when you're going to the game in San Fran. And I also think a lot of people are going to buy into Rodgers coming back, Wilson, Brees. The 49ers are still one of the best defenses in the league. Yep. They still have uh, McCaffrey, Ayuk, Debo. Per- I mean, what do we – and it's in San Fran. Um Again, I need to see it out of New York before I bet on it. On paper, looks great. Haven't seen it yet. You know, we saw a, a torn ACL, a fucking brutal injury. Got to see it first. Give me, give me the Niners. I don't think I, I don't think much changes for the the Jets yet. I think they obviously play well, hang in there. But the Niners to win by seven or ten, I think that's perfectly. Perfectly reasonable. Mikey? I don't. I couldn't agree more. Aaron Rodgers is 41 years old. He takes Iowa, yeah. ayahuasca like once a year. Gotta, uh, gotta see it. 
Tom Brady was, you know, eating like fucking like he like uh, said tomatoes weren't healthy enough, so he abolished them from his diet. That's how sick in the head he was. I get that Aaron Rodgers probably has a diet, but that diet includes ayahuasca. I believe in Garrett Wilson. I believe in Brees Hall. I think they're studs. I don't believe in anybody else in those skill position rooms. Mike Williams, I think, is probably going to get hurt. Alan Lazard, shell of himself. I don't even know who their other even receivers with Brees are. Hall, head. Like people are taking him first in fantasy. I gotta see it, man. It doesn't. You don't just like become. Yeah. Well, I think I, it's I a matter of it. staying healthy with him because, like, he is a stud. Like when he's available, like he's got all of the attributes. Like he's. Yeah. He's got some McCaffrey to him where he's a pretty good receiver. You know, he has really good vision, good speed. Yeah, but agile. all those guys I've seen, I've seen McCaffrey score three touchdowns every game yep. for two seasons straight. I've seen Debo score. I've seen it all with them. And, yeah, it, you have to throw Rodgers into – hasn't played under the lights, or you know, a, a game in a whole year. Um yeah, I honestly, they might get blown out. I, I wouldn't even surprise me. The Jets well, defense know, is still the, yeah, there. That's that's the angle I'm looking at this with. Is but you're also Robert going Sala to... is you know he's the former defensive coordinator for the Niners. That's how he got this job because he kicked ass with that Niners defense, and anybody could have kicked ass with that Niners defense. Yeah, but Shanahan's right Sala. up there for the one of the best yep. coaches too. You you have to go in and, and kind of test the waters with this whole Jets team, and you have to test it against the Niners. That's just oh. like. I mean, it's this might like the Ravens be Chiefs. Like you can't like, really. It could get be much the biggest uh, coaching mismatch of the weekend. Kyle Shanahan, who I regard as a top three, top four coach, and Robert Sala, oh, yeah. who I regard as a bottom three, bottom four coach, probably bottom one. I can't stand. Yeah, that. Aaron Rodgers pretty much coaches that team. Um, wow, what a slate! What a fucking such a delicious put, fucking slate. I know. Football's so back. I've been. Oh. I mean, God, it's been what seven months. Seven long, grueling months. I was pretty sad. I like to do that. Like after the Brit, like I was pretty fucking. I almost texted you saying, "Yo, like, kick me," and I was like, "No, I love talking about football with the boys. Um, I'm so pumped that this is back and we get to do this. And to the people watching, I will be in a house with a light next time, not my car with a cop light. Um, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Fuck! I wish the Ravens won, man. I really wish. But, you know, hey, I think this is the perfect opportunity. We haven't addressed it on the podcast yet. First pop-off parlay of the year dropped today. Oh, um, you f- do the honors on the pop-off parlay. And Was if you're I not familiar one? with the pop-off parlay, everybody a- sends a pick into the group chat, and we combine it into a parlay. Very simple. The only rule is if you were the only one that does not hit on the parlay, then you have to suffer a consequence. And that consequence, traditionally, and will remain so until we determine a new one, is the loser, the loser that lost us all the opportunity to You make know, I was money, the only one to put my balls in the line. Has to okay. shotgun a four loco. Mike Cerrone, I now anoint you with the four loco. I'm passing yeah, the torch. Tomorrow. Take the baton. I did it. <laughs> it sucks ass. It, it, it is brutal. I mean, I, I and you got to record no. a video of it. You got to post it to your goddamn socials. It can't just be something you send in the group chat. All fucking 7,000, no. whatever, 30,000 of our followers have to see it. You got to put it out there for the people to see. Yeah. No, I, I, I'll, uh, if I'm a man of my word, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it tomorrow. You know, and I and I fucking yeah. I put my I was the only one that put my balls on the line. I think I was the only plus. What money. do you mean? It was like a Pacheco. Anytime you had, or I guess you're you're. This the same you odds. Made it. It's the same odds. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but Ravens got money got line a was a ballsy catch. play. It was a ballsy play, and god damn it, I was fucking right until they reversed the call because we would have got the two. We would have. I would have fucking. Oh my god, man! I just yeah, a lot of a lot of emotions in me right now. But um, yeah, I'll chug the loco tomorrow. Fuck it, I'm homeless. Why not? Let's just chug <laughs> locos. Why you gotta do it outside not? of like a, a BP gas well. station? Yeah, and just look as my homeless home. as possible. Wear maybe some I'll just jeans. <laughs> maybe I'll just pack up shop at the gas station where I get the loco. I don't have to drink and drive. It's my home. Ask you know, a stranger just... to buy you a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. Fucking unbelievable, man. I can't oh wait to fucking just <laughs> in Michigan next. one day with my <laughs> wife and kids doing a movie here. Thinking back to this fucking day. That should be the fucking next punishment for the parlay is you have to panhandle on the side and ask for money. Oh, that's that's bad. That, that might be real. 
that might be rude. Oh, no, the shotgun. That, that's a pretty good. Uh, because like that's a pretty like doable. Like you're like you know how you lose. Like I've lost fantasy leagues after like the 24 hour IHOP thing. Yeah, you're not gonna do that for a parlay. The loco. I mean, that's gonna ruin your day. You it know, sucks. you're not. You're not it getting much. It sets you back done. for several hours. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I had to go coach, or I might have just gotten done coaching, or I had to go coach like three hours later. I'm like, I gotta sober yeah. up, and you're and gonna feel that shower. in the morning too. Yeah, <laughs> you took a cold shower. Fuck. God. All right. Well, yeah, that's gonna be another good piece of content. I mean, NFL's back. The content's gonna be probably triple, quadrupled over the next six months, especially with college ball. I love the rent money guys because I they're so good at college ball. It's wild. Caps went like. 13 and two, which is like actually just fucked. Like, I don't think anybody does that. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to be back. Tough to get a kick in the balls like that for the just, it's so bittersweet being <laughs> the first to start game. The season. I mean, you should have seen me in the chilies, man, when he caught that ball <laughs> and it got, and it got fucking, I mean, put that on a I'm fucking quote bed, card. Man. You should have seen me in the chilies, man. The chilies All when right. He caught, when likely caught that ball. <laughs> That that'll that'll do it for us tonight. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of Mike Cerrone, I'm Ralph Campiano. This is the Pop Off Podcast. Thank you for listening. We love you. We appreciate you so much. Make sure to go Poor listen Ravens. to Rent Money if you haven't already. Make sure to share this episode with a friend. And make sure to lock back in Monday morning when we'll be back. We'll be recapping all these games and we'll see how we did against our me and Cerrone going against one another. So we will see you guys on the other side. Peace out. I'm loving the pop off.